Good morning. I hope this video finds you well. Uh, I look to um, get back into Ephesians chapter 5. We've been kind of working through there, and uh, we were going at quite a good uh, good little pace, but we've had to slow down a little bit, or I've had to slow down a little bit, because uh, just life happens, and, and there are some... Um, just deep things to think about, but as we continue in chapter 5 this morning, um, I want to pick up on verse 3 and go into verse 10, uh, because there's some, some pretty heavy stuff in here. Um, Paul writes uh, about immorality, um, sexual immorality, uh, more poignantly, but, but immorality. Um, and so here's the question that I wanted to start with. If you could avoid anything uh, at all costs, or if there's anything that you would avoid at all costs, what would that be? Uh, you know, as a Cardinal fan, I occasionally joke about avoiding uh, being a f Cub fan at all costs, right? But, but seriously, uh, what would you avoid at all costs? What is so far removed from you your interests, your desires, maybe even bad habits that are so far removed from you and the person you want to be that you steer clear from them uh, with all that you are. Uh, dare I say, avoid it like the plague. Um, sorry, I couldn't help myself. Um, so anyway, as we continue in through chapter 5, um, this section of chapter 5, Paul expands on these first two verses where he says uh, to imitate God or be imitators of God as dearly beloved children. Uh, dearly beloved children. Um, these are not just, oh, well, I got a bunch of kids uh, or I kind of like these kids. Um, dearly beloved means that there's an intimacy, uh, that these are a, a special group of the children of God. Not that any children, child of God is not special. Uh, every child of God fits into this special group, but it's, it's uh, a term denoted or that denotes the intimacy uh, of relationship that God seeks to have with us. Uh, as his children. And so he says, be imitators of God as dearly beloved children uh, and live a life of love just like Christ. Uh, imitate Christ. And so as we get into today, uh, continuing into chapter 5, Paul expands on these first two verses of the chapter, encouraging Ephesian Christians to abstain uh, from the, the common sexual expression that Ephesus was known for. Uh, and that would be immorality, sexual immorality. Uh, why? Uh, well, because it's improper for us as children who are loved by God, seeking to imitate him because it's taking a gift that he has given humanity and using it in, in a way that it was never designed to be used, in a way that's harmful to self, in a way that's harmful to others. Uh, and, and so when I say that it's improper for us children uh, beloved uh, by God, I'm, I'm, you know, using Paul's words here. Um, but, but I'm not talking about sexuality in, in general, the way that it's supposed to be used, but just the immoral uh, sexuality, the, the way that sexuality is not supposed to be used. Um, and, and so when we're seeking to imitate him, uh, we want to use the gifts that we have been given um, and the relationships that we have been given in, in a way that's pleasing to him, in a way that he would use them. Uh, reality, uh, in, in reality, um, sexual immorality d does not love. Uh, it does not imitate God. Uh, and it decimates the lives of every party engaged. And we may not feel it. We may not see it. Um, those uh, That harm may not be uh, that quick. It may be um, <clears throat> a long time coming. But it leads to idolatry of mind, body, and soul. And Paul treats it here as something to avoid at all costs. Not sexuality, but 
sexual immorality, right? Uh, so he even tells the Ephesian, the Ephesian Christians not to be partners with people who engage in these things uh, because this immorality is a literal poison to our humanity. So does that mean that, that we don't ever talk to uh, people who in, engage in that kind of immorality, that, that we avoid them at all costs? No. Uh, we're supposed to reach out in love to love our neighbor, and they still are our neighbor, uh, but not be partners with them, not join in with them, not adopt their mindset or their actions. Uh, so without going further, I think that that's, that's pretty clear. And that's where St. Paul goes, uh, and, and he's very, very strong on that. But here's what's amazing in, in this section of, of Scripture. Uh, that on our sinful state of darkness, a light has shined. Uh, and, and Paul doesn't come out and say it here. Um, but, but he talks about us being born dead to God and alive to sin. Uh, he talks about us being completely void. Uh, we have all fallen short of the glory of God, and, and we cannot fix ourselves. Our fallenness is so fallen that there's no way for us to fix ourselves. We are on, in a sinful state of darkness according to our sinful human nature. Uh, but in the midst of that darkness, a light has shined. And we love that passage from Isaiah that we read at Christmas. Uh, in the midst of the darkness, a light has shined. And that points to the birth of Christ. Uh, that light truly has uh, shined and that light truly is the light of the world that light truly is Christ himself as the gospels tell us and that light has shined on you and it continues to shine on you because you are a dearly beloved child of God and that can be an uncomfortable reality at times can't it because what does light do it exposes everything uh, but the light of Christ, although it does expose everything, it's the light of God's grace. And despite what that light reveals about you, he has forgiven you. And he has made you light in the midst of this sin-darkened world. I think that's important to remember. The darkness inside us is forgiven. It shines in the light. It gets shown for what it is. Yeah, and that's not pleasant all the time. But it's forgiven. That's God's last word on everything. Forgiveness. So we are free to live our identity as forgiven sinners. Yes, absolutely. But more importantly and closer to <clears throat> what's going on in this section of Scripture, as dearly loved children, to borrow from verse 1. And so the encouragement, live your identity in light, or live as children of light, as Paul says, feasting on the scriptures as they power everything that we are in Christ Jesus. And so here are some parting uh, questions, something to think about. What are some particulars of how you live your identity in Christ Jesus? What are some of the things that you do? What are some of the ways uh, that you live in Christ's light and shine in the world around you? Uh, what are some of the ways that Christ uses you to shine in this sin-darkened world? Which is maybe another way of asking the same question. Um, and <clears throat> also, too, verse 10 uh, Paul encourages us to find out what pleases the Lord, right? To grow in that relationship, to dig around uh, in the scriptures and, and, and see and learn and grow in, what's in, in our knowledge of what's pleasing in his sight. Uh, so what is it that you would like to learn about pleasing the Lord uh, today, the rest of this week, uh, maybe in the weeks to come? As we look forward to transitioning back to some sort of uh, normal life, right? What do we want to learn about pleasing the Lord and ways to do that? Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, uh, we thank and praise you for the gifts that you have given us, the gift of relationship, uh, even the gift of sexuality. Uh, and Lord, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit um, to guard us from using that gift in a sinful way, thinking about that gift in sinful ways, 
joking about that gift in sinful ways and all the other ways that that our sin has has tainted that gift. Lord, help us to be lights shining in a sin-darkened world. Help us to, in humility uh, and, and true love for our neighbor, uh, reach out to the world around us, shine, um, that they would be invited to step into the light as we are beloved children of light. Lord, forgive us of all of our sins and keep us mindful of that status as forgiven, beloved children of God and encourage us, lead us to learn and grow in our relationship with you. Um, that we can um, just shine more brightly and be used by you in ways that are pleasing in your sight. Lord, these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you again soon.